So Nova Blast 1 or Nova Blast 2, wow, I'm struggling to see any difference really on those strides. Really hope you're doing okay. I've got my light blue kit on today. I've got the Essex Nova Blast 2 and I've got my Sit and Kick podcast vest. That's David Ribich and Josh Kerr from the Brooks Beasts. Josh Kerr is the guy that's going to be representing Britain in the 1500 metres at the Olympics in a couple of weeks' time. Anyway, enough of them. So, what we're going to talk about today is the Essex Nova Blast 2. Now, you probably know from my reviews so far that I don't really go in for everyday trainers. I always think everyday trainers in my size are just heavy bricks. I think perhaps the only exception to this is probably this shoe which I took to 200 miles last year in the original version here's the original version here in the rather different orange colorway and so that was the shoe that I actually wore most for like everyday training but I probably of all the shoes I actually wore the most is probably like the Endorphin Speed, the Peg Turbo 2 and even the Nexus Scent actually wore more of them so why do I not like daily trainers well mainly because they're so heavy and you will think on a recovery day you want something to actually make life easier for you not not otherwise and something like the Invincible though it's quite nice and spongy it is a very heavy shoe pegasus 37 i tried was even worse felt like a, like a brick really so this one is a pleasant change i remember last year i quoted the nova blast one to the next percent i think at the time they were the only two sort of super squishy foam shoes i had and since then i've probably got a lot more but I'd still say that the next percent and the nova blast are quite similar in a way obviously the nova blast doesn't have the carbon plate so it just makes it more of a sort of a, a sponge under your foot but I've been out for it now for 25 miles over three runs the last few days and it's certainly not a fast shoe but it's certainly a shoe that when on tired legs you can just get yourself going. So a lot of people have said is there actually any difference between the Nova Blast 1 and the Nova Blast 2? Well on feet I couldn't really detect much of a difference. I think some people said the Nova Blast 1 was very unstable and never used it but if the shoe was really that unstable I certainly wouldn't have run 200 miles in it and I think someone like the FOD runner Andy has run about 400 miles in his pair so he wasn't having any problems. In terms of all the issues that I had with the Nova Blast 1, it does come up rather long. So I got this in a UK 13, and bizarrely on the ASICS shoe finder, they're actually recommending I should get a 12. Although they also recommend I should get a 12 in the Metaspeed Sky, which is the one that was so short I had to send back because I could barely get my toes in. So I'm not sure I'm going to read too much into that. So let's have a quick comparison between the 1 and the 2. So the first thing I do is actually look at the insoles to compare the lengths because this is the shoe that notoriously feels like it comes up a bit long. This is the Nova Blast 2 insole on the left. Now one thing I would say that the insoles on both of these two are exactly the same length. What's interesting, this is the original version, you can see where the end of my toes come up there. So I've got a good thumb width there just without the shoe even having it on. Now I pulled out the Nike Invincible as another everyday trainer, a very squishy one just to compare the lengths of the insoles. Both of these are in a the UK 13. Now it's a bit hard to tell, but I would say that the Nike one is just ever so slightly shorter than the Asics one. You can see just a bit of overlap there of the Asics one, so it probably explains why it's just a couple of millimetres longer on feeling on foot. The insoles of the shoes haven't changed at all in the fact that it's got the same mark here, WA1AA. So just comparing the uppers, the uppers are fairly similar actually, although the, the, the pattern of the material has changed slightly. I think so for me, most of these changes are pretty cosmetic. They say that the fit is better in the two, and to a certain extent I'd agree, but I've still got the same issues. It's still coming up slightly long, and it's still coming up quite wide for me. As you can see here, I've had to pull in the laces an awful lot on both of these shoes. And I've even for once done the double knot on both, which I don't normally do, but to try and snug down the foot here a bit better. The tongue on the two is now gusseted. It's quite hard to see if I got there. Yeah, you can just see it there. Whereas on the one it isn't. So that is probably improving the lockdown. And you've got this sort of ASICS kind of like sticker now across here, which does help a bit of pressure across the, the tongue. Whereas it didn't have that before. If anything, the, the tongue there seems slightly more cushioned than there. Very little in it though, to be honest. What they have done is they improved the laces. So they gave these rather sort of cheap um, ones before, which are quite thin and now having to pull them in. You can see that quite a lot of stretching on there. Whereas you feel that these laces here are a lot more sort of upmarket. If we look at the hill counters, I would say there's just slightly more structure in the new one. Not much in it. Definitely quite stiff on the sides of the shoe. Yeah, I definitely say that the the two is just a slightly stiffer heel cup. 
but you can see that the pattern there is pretty similar. We've still got five eyelets on both shoes with the double knot option. So one, two, three, four, five there, and one, two, three, four, five. So not much change there. Quite a similar eyelet holders there with these sort of cutaways almost. The outsoles look pretty similar, although some of the patterns have changed. Now, one thing that's rather concerning, this shoe I've only done 25 miles in, but you can see here that some of this material here is starting to peel away. And I did run yesterday when it was very hot, but it was mainly a road run. Sorry about that, I had a power cut inside, so I just divert to the road where it was a bit more light. Anyway, what was I saying about the Nova Blast 2? Yeah, so I think in terms of the overall feeling that very similar to the Nova Blast 1, I think if anything, perhaps I prefer these slightly more after 25 miles, not much in it. I'm a bit worried about that uh, peeling back on the outsole though. I might get in contact with Asics to see what they say about that, because that's not gonna last too much longer. The, the original one after 200 miles wasn't showing that wear at all. It looks like it's brand new, so that's kind of odd. So in terms of fit, I think in my scoring system, I'm gonna give it a six out of 10, because it's still rather long, it's still rather wide. And you really you feel that you have to can sort of contrive the fit a bit so not the best of fits but it's adequate and in terms of speed well it's not really a speed shoe i would say it's about a five out of ten i mean i think it's a shoe that you can take a bit faster if you want to it's nice and squishy but it's certainly a shoe that i never actually really take out for fast runs it's always a shoe that I'm my go-to when I want to sort of just get a few miles in like now when I'm feeling quite tired. So yeah, 5 out of 10 for the speed. And for the overall score, I think um, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. I think it's still an everyday trainer. It's still one that I kind of reach for on my slow days rather than every day. But I think if you, one of those shoes, that if you didn't want to have too many pairs of shoes, <laughs> didn't want to have sort of like tempo shoes, racing shoes, everyday trainers then it wouldn't be a bad option to use every day it just sort of looks so long though I think Asics shoes look rather ugly maybe a contest for Hoka for all their shoes looking for fairly similar I think I've never really got on with Asics I always feel like they come up a bit wide but this is perhaps the one exception so yeah all in all a good update I think um, there's a few things that probably people appreciate not too much radically different it's still a shoe that is nice and squishy, does the job. It's not really the fastest shoe, but obviously if you if you are fast, then you're going to run faster than anything, which stands the reason, doesn't it? Anyway, so I hope you've appreciated this little look at the Asics Nova Blast 2. Uh, like and subscribe and all that, and I look forward to seeing the next one then. Bye! Daisy, what do you think of the Nova Blast? Mm -hmm.